Hello and welcome to this session on Candiduria and invasive abdominal candidiasis. Candida we know is a normal colonizer of our mucous membranes, the gastrointestinal tract, the genitourinary tract. Whenever there is a breach in the defense mechanisms, whenever there is a change in the ecology, this Candida which is colonizing the tract then becomes an invader and results in widespread clinical manifestations starting from mucosal disease to systemic disease and multi-organ disease. Candiduria is one of the common clinical manifestations that we encounter in our day-to-day -day practice. If you were actually to screen the general population, their urine, more than 1% of them would actually show Canada in the urine. This figure goes up significantly by 5 to 10 times when it comes to hospitalized patients and is even higher in those who are in the ICUs, whether it's the medical or the surgical ICUs, and still higher in the burns unit. A patient who stayed in the hospital longer than five days and has a, uh, an indwelling catheter in C2, there's a 50% chance or more that he would be harboring Canada. This is the second most common organism that has been isolated from urine in the hospitalized patients. Although candidemia occurs in only about 3 to 4 percent of the cases, but 10 percent of all candidemias have had a candiduria in the past. It is associated with a rise in mortality by nearly 19 to 50 percent, but treatment of this candiduria has not seen to alter the mortality, meaning that presence of candida basically suggests or reflects that there is some depression in the immune status. That is why Canada is present and that is why the response to the treatment would be poorer. When you look at the species, albicans is the predominant species, but the difference between albicans and non-albicans ratio is not very much these days. Canada glabrata is also on the rise. There are various studies which have shown that Canada was the second most common species to be isolated in the urine, out of which albicans forms about 60 to 65 percent and the remaining are non-albicans. Please note that the non-albicans have also the tendency to develop higher biofilm formation, thus can result in prolonged uh, candiduria and prolonged infections. The most common risk factors that have been identified with the presence of candiduria involve prolonged antibiotics, broad spectrum antibiotic usage with a urinary tract uh, drainage device being in situ followed by a urinary tract pathology or diabetes and then malignancy.